Today we're going to check out an interesting mechanical keyboard from the prevalent Moto Speed in the budget range. This is the Moto Speed K87S. Thanks to Banggood.com for providing this keyboard to check out and their continued support. I'll put some links in the description for more info. Opening up the box we have the keyboard itself and some paperwork and that's it, there's no keycap puller or anything else. Motorspeed, as most of us know, is a well-known budget brand, but most of their keyboards are pretty much full size, so it's really cool for them to actually come out with a 10 keyless version. So this has 87 keys as the model name suggests, and basically just cuts off the numpad on the side. I highly recommend checking out 10 keyless keyboards for people first looking into getting a mechanical keyboard, as the numpad isn't 100% necessary for many people. It also gives you more space for your mouse and allows for a more ergonomic experience. Usually there's a specific feature or something that makes me pick a keyboard for review, and the design of this keyboard is the main reason I decided to make a video on this. First of all, it's pretty simplistic in comparison to their other keyboards. It's a simple rounded rectangular design. The top plate is a sleek silver aluminium with no branding, which is very very common on many budget mechanical keyboards. There is no top exterior shell, so we have a floating key design, so the key switches are exposed from the sides. This is a personal taste thing if you like it or not. But the combination of a completely plastic shell as well as an aluminium mounting plate rather than a heavier steel plate makes the keyboard quite light. It doesn't really have that traditional mechanical keyboard heft to it. We have the white keycaps, but they have that gamery font or typeface on them. This is a gaming keyboard, so I guess it fits the theme, but I can never really get behind the look of these types. I prefer something more simple and clean, and it would have really complemented the rest of the keyboard. The top function row is also lower than usual, so there's no gap between that and the number row, and it does make it slightly easier to reach. And on the rear we have the non-detachable USB cable. But the main attraction is this transparent plastic bottom shell, I checked out something similar from Velocifier, but they went a little bit crazy with theirs. This one however is simplistic and how it should be in my opinion. Although on the bottom there's some sort of white piece covering the bottom of the PCB, and then there's this white frosted shell inside the case itself, completely covering the internals, so it's kinda like a case inside the case. And finally there's two flat rubber feet and two rubber tipped flip up feet. From the side it has a pretty slim profile. Without the flip up feet up, it has a slight natural inclination, and we also get a good view of the key switches from the side because the diffusion piece doesn't start until further down, so it's kind of a mixed look where some parts are fully visible and others aren't. But that's not all because when we plug it in we get some nice underglow. The keyboard is marketed as an RGB keyboard. The lighting is split up into two parts, we have the key illumination on top, and the underglow lighting at the bottom. Okay, so first of all, it doesn't flicker like this in real life, it's just the camera, so I'll chuck in some photos as well that look pretty close to the real thing. There are a couple of things I don't like though. First of all, all the keycaps on top are just ugly in my opinion. It doesn't contribute well to the aesthetic of the keyboard. That's why I prefer the white black lighting in normal lit conditions since it kind of blends in the legends, whereas having the lights off doesn't. I'm also not a fan of the diffusion of the underglow LEDs. They're using a separate diffusion piece inside, but it looks quite thin, so while the light is spread, there's still the clear points where the LEDs are, which are also made quite clear by the reflection on the table surface. It would look so much better with the outer shell more diffused, as well as being a bit thicker like on the GANS or GANS GK87 Pro, which is also quite similar. The whole thing is also quite in your face and it's definitely not for everyone. Taking the keycaps off and we have 1mm thin double shot ABS keycaps. Double shot just means that the legends are a different piece of plastic so they'll never fade away. And underneath the caps we have the very common budget Altima blue switches. These are just clones of the Cherry MX switches and they mimic the colour characteristics as well so these are tactile and clicky with a travel distance of 4mm. And here's a quick sound test.
Now to the disassembly. The keyboard is held together by a few Phillips head screws as well as some Torx screws which you may not have a screwdriver for. Here's the thin piece of plastic that diffuses the underglow LEDs and just sits in the outer clear casing. It's just too thin to do a proper job of spreading the light, but under that is this piece of just actual paper which blocks everything from the bottom view. The aluminium plate is 1.5mm which is pretty normal. The PCB has a nice clean white solder mask which actually looks pretty good with a clear case by the way. Here's the underglow LED scattered around the edge of the PCB and the key LEDs are actually mounted on the other side of the PCB. So I'm not too keen on this completely clear transparent look for the bottom plastic and I want it to look like all the other cool underglow keyboards. So I have this frosted glass spray and as described it frosts glass and in theory would work in a similar way for plastic. I'm just going to spray it straight on top without any scuffing and see how it goes. After a few passes it wasn't really adhering well as we can see, also showing some peeling, but it was a bit cold and I probably went a bit too heavy, so in this case it's probably best to go with many light coats. It was pretty rough so I decided to wet sand it a bit with some soapy water and 2000 grit sandpaper, then I went with the light coats. And it turned out better but not perfect. Then to top it off, I'll chuck on my cheap white PBT blank keycaps. I would like to try other keycaps, but my keycap game is super weak, but it matches the theme anyway. And here it is, and it's so so much cleaner. Without the underglow on, it's completely different. It's much more sleeker and cleaner and hides all those extra lines that could be seen through the plastic before. The inner diffuse plastic piece is hidden now, as well as the bottom halves of the key switches. It's also not so reflective and shiny and is more subdued and matte blending in much better with the top aluminium piece. I didn't protect it with a top clear coat yet but it looks like it wouldn't impact on the look so a nice satin or matte clear coat would probably be fine. But of course the underglow. Again just a billion times better looking in my opinion. It's so much cleaner, shows off the colours better and all of a sudden it makes it look so much more premium. And from the top view we now have a glowing ring around the edge which looks pretty neat. The individual LEDs are still quite sharp though and can still be easily seen. I actually didn't spray the inside of the case and I'm quite tempted to do so but we'd make it a bit more dim. The usual method to achieve this look would be with frosted acrylic which is also thicker than this creating a much more cleaner and diffuse aesthetic. They also gave me this keyboard case which is pretty useful for protecting your keyboard during transportation. It's made from 3mm felt and actually has the Cherry logo lasered on it, plus a bit more below that which it probably could have gone without. It can be had in different sizes but this is the 10 keyless version and the keyboard fits pretty snugly. It's also nice to have a velcro strap for the cable on the K87S and it secures with a strap and I'd say it does a pretty good job of protecting your keyboard inside your bag. Also I did mess up my footage where I went through all the lighting modes so it's scattered with no narration over the conclusion. Overall it's a unique product from Motospeed. It's a light keyboard with just the aluminium plate and the plastic case but it's still solid enough. And it's nice to get a 10 keyless offering from Motorspeed instead of just full size keyboards. I think the aesthetic design is a bit mixed up as I explained, and it would be nice to get more budget keyboards without the Gamery font on the keycaps. But there's definitely potential in the keyboard. The Frost Glass Spray isn't the cheapest here in Australia at over 10 bucks, but in the US it can be had for around $5 and you'll only be using a little bit, so I'll get more out of mine. It also has a completely standard ANSI layout, so changing the keycaps can be an option in the future, giving it even more potential. Thanks again to banggood.com for providing the keyboard and being a long time supporter of the channel, and I'll leave the links in the description.